So in this video, we're, we're talking about uh, the catalytic mechanism of mu y, and we're going we're gonna to be drawing out the, the chemical mechanism, how, uh, highlighting how catalytic residues at the active site of mu y facilitate the, the, uh, the bond-breaking reaction that is responsible for removing adenine from these OGA base pairs. So we'll, we'll zoom in on uh, the covalent structure of the adenine nucleotide as it's located in, in DNA. And so this is uh, adenine. It's, it's been flipped out into the active site of, of mu y and, and, and therefore is in close proximity with this carboxylic acid functional group, aspartate, the residue aspartate 144. And it's all, the other important agent in this mechanism is another carboxylic acid functional group provided by residue glutamate 43. And these, um, the numbers are, are those that correspond with the enzyme from Geobacillus stereothermophilus. That's the enzyme for which we can determine the crystal structure that actually shows the position of all these atoms in in, um, in atomic detail. But the human enzyme has uh, a glutamate and, a, and an aspartate uh, in the same, there's, there's a sequence uh, sim uh, identity for, for these catalytic residue, highlighting the importance of, uh, of these residues since they're preserved through the evolution that separates bacteria and humans. They must be important. And we're now gonna see um, how they contribute to breaking of this bond between the carbon at the one prime position and the nit nitrogen at the nine position in, in the base. And we'll use, um, we'll use so-called arrow pushing to, to illustrate how that works. Uh, a lone pair electron from this oxygen will come and, and form some double bond character here. And, and that will um, then force these electrons uh, in, into the ring structure of the adenine base. And that is promoted by the close proximity of this acid functional group. So the ability to protonate at this N7 position uh, weakens this N glycosidic bond uh, to encourage uh, covalent bond breakage at this point. And, and that, you know, that, that explains the the importance of glutamate 43 for, for the catalytic mechanism. And what, uh, what we create through this reaction is a, a highly unstable intermediate. So we're gonna draw its structure next. It has a positively charged uh, carbon that's, that's really only bonded to, to three things. Very, very unstable. And we've created the, the adenine free base and it's uh, after pro protonation. So we'll add the, the proton here. And this is the, the leaving group in this SN1 type reaction. And the glutamate uh, 43 is now in its conjugate base form. And that'll be important for the, the final step in this hydrolytic reaction. But what I really want to call attention to right now is the, the role of aspartate 144 for stabilizing this highly unstable transition state. So we'll draw in some labels here. This is the oxa carbenium 
uh, ion transition, and it's a transition state, meaning it is like, it is the most unstable intermediate uh, during the, the whole process. And the close proximity of aspartate 144 uh, with its negative charge helps explain how the enzyme is stabilizing the oxocarbenium transition state. And in doing so, it makes the reaction faster because there is a lower activation barrier separating the, the substrate and, and the product. So it, this, uh, this transition state, we're at, at the very peak of our energy diagram. If we draw in here energy as a function of the reaction coordinate, here's our adenine base. Uh, in the uncatalyzed form, there's an insurmountable energy barrier separating the adenine DNA from its apurinic, apyrimidinic site, a, a DNA without any base. But with the enzyme and transition state stabilization, uh, we can draw in here delta delta G, and we, we see in this example exactly where this is coming from. It's coming from the electrostatic stabilization, um, the close pairing of positive and negative charges. And notice that this it's only this electrostatic interaction only happens for the transition state. The, the substrate is neutral. The product, as, as we're going to see, is also neutral. So we only gain this additional uh, molecular interaction for the transition state. So it's, the enzyme is engineered or designed uh, through evolution to, to best interact with the oxocarbenium ion tra transition state. So in the next uh, part of the reaction, adenine has to leave the active site and and we we bring in a, a water molecule and, and wa water is a pretty good nucleophile but it is made more potent by uh, the close proximity of this catalytic base so we we're gener we have an easy time generating the the hydroxide nucleophile and that will be attacking at this electrophilic center to to finish the reaction, I'll draw that out here at the bottom. O H of the nucleophile. And now this uh, this carbon is back to its uh, tetrahedral stable form. Uh, this is the a the AP site. Um, just so there's no confusion, this this hydrogen has been present in in all of these, uh, both in the substrate at, at the C1, at the C1 prime position. So this is the finished product, uh, glutamate. Uh, One forty three is back in its protonated form, ready to undergo another round of catalysis. Uh, aspartate. Just for completion, we'll draw that in here. negative charge. But that now this negative charge is not as strongly interacting with, with the product because the product is, is no longer carrying the, the positive charge. So these are like our action freeze frames. Here we have step one, binding to the substrate and protonation of the adenine. Here we have transition state stabilization. And then finally here we've, we've made the product uh, uh, the abasic site of, of DNA with adenine removed. And this then becomes the substrate for another enzyme, an endonuclease. There's, there's many other stories we could be talking about. Finally, we get back to um, a, a DNA that's been repaired after many steps. And, and so this explains Mute Y's role in, in DNA repair.